everybody, welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. This is week two of the My First Knit Sweater Knit Along. Your homework last week for week one was to complete a gauge swatch and to decide what size sweater you will be making. So by this point, you should have chosen the yarn and the needles you are going to use based on your gauge swatch and have a pretty good idea of what size uh, sweater you're going to be making. Now, I am a big part of the Facebook group host uh, that uh, we put together for the Knit Along. And in the Facebook group, I have noticed a recurring problem with twisted stitches. So I think what's happening here is that we have a lot of beginner knitters working with us, and you guys just aren't really sure how you're supposed to create a purl stitch. So what I wanna start off this video doing is showing you how to recognize twisted stitches what causes them and how you can quickly fix them. All right, so we're gonna start off this video with those instructions. Twisted stitches are really common, especially for beginner knitters. The way to recognize them is as you're looking at a stockinette fabric, you will notice that on every other row, the bottom part of the V looks like that it's crossed over. It's almost as if it's crossing its legs. And you'll notice that it's every other row. So on this row, this one's right. This one, see how the stitches are crossed over at the bottom? This one's correct. And these ones are crossed over at the bottom. The reason it happens every other row is because on the purl rows, you're actually purling under the needle instead of over the needle. What I mean by that is this. You're inserting your right hand needle into the stitch to purl and you are taking your yarn and you're going underneath that right hand needle. Can you see how my yarn is underneath it? By doing the purls this way, by purling with the yarn underneath that right hand needle, I am actually making my stitches that are going onto my right hand needle in a position where they will be sitting backwards. And I'm gonna show you what I mean, okay? So I'm gonna finish this row of knitting with the yarn under. When I turn and I get ready to work my stitches back, I want you to see how they're sitting on my needle. Can you see here as the stitch is resting on my needle just like this, okay? What happens is if it were my middle finger were the back leg, the back leg is sitting forward of the front leg, okay? Can you see right here? Here's the back leg and it's sitting in front of the front leg. Same with this one. The back leg right there is in front of the front leg. All of my stitches are sitting like, like this, okay? They're sitting like this all the way down. That's not a problem if I were to knit them through the back leg because you usually will knit the stitch that is forward, the one that's um, taking a step forward. That's the one it's like, hey, look at me, I want to be knit, okay? So if you were knitting it through the back leg because that's the leg that's forward, you wouldn't end up with a twisted stitch. But what's happening for those of you who are getting this twisted stockinette is instead of knitting through the back leg to straighten out that stitch, you are still going into the stitch through the front leg and knitting it as normal. And what that is doing is it's taking the stitch that you just knit into and it's twisting the bottom legs. Let me show you a couple more how this looks. You can see here how the stitch is resting on the needle with the back leg forward, okay? So it's like saying, hey, knit me, knit me. I'm the one that wants to be knit. But you're saying, no, I'm supposed to knit the front leg. So you do. And when it comes off, the stitch you just knit into now has a twisted bottom. That's what's creating these twisted stitches every other row. Okay, you're probably even finding that it's difficult to get into that stitch through the front leg because it is, you're twisting it, you're making it that it's a tighter stitch, okay? Can you see how all of those stitches I just knit, all of the bottom half of those Vs are all twisted. It's because I knit them through the front leg when the stitch was resting on my needle incorrectly. Now, if I'm coming across and I have to knit this way, what I can do here is, as I mentioned, that back leg is stepping forward. It really wants to be knit. So I can go into the back leg and knit it through the back leg, and voila, 
my stitch is perfect. It's no longer twisted. Can you see that? See how those are no longer twisted? It's because I knit them through the leg that needed to be knit, the one that was stepping forward, okay? So we've identified why you're getting these twisted stitches. It's because you're wrapping your needle with the yarn under instead of a yarn over. Now, if you absolutely must purl that way because that's the way you are, you're a combination knitter, then all you need to do is purl that way, but on your knit rows, you must knit it through the back leg. If you are somebody who's like, oh, I just didn't know I wasn't supposed to purl that way. How am I supposed to purl in order for the stitches to be laying correctly so that I can knit normally? Let me show you how that is. All right, so here's a stockinette swatch. The stitches are not twisted and I'm on the purl side. And so to make it so that your stitches are not twisted, you will go into the stitch to purl just like normal, into the stitch to purl but you will wrap your yarn over top of the needle. See how it's a yarn over the needle? And then pop that out. Insert as if to purl, yarn over the needle, and then pop it out. Insert as if to purl, over the needle, and pop it out. And those of you who followed me on the channel for a while know that I am by um, nature a continental knitter and purler and so this is what it looks like if you are purling continental you'll notice that I go in just like normal I yarn over top of the needle just like if I were doing an English method and out in over top and out in over top and out okay What's gonna happen here is when I get to the end of the row and turn, we're gonna notice that all of my stitches are resting on my needle the correct way this time. They're not gonna have the back leg forward, they're gonna have the front leg forward. So as I turn my work and I take a look, first off, notice all of my stitches are nice and uniform. They, they don't have any twisted stitches on the bottom. And then as my stitches are on my needle here, they're not l l laying like this, they're like this, okay? So let's show you what I mean. Let me put my yarn over here again. Just right here at the start, you can see, look at the front one right there, it's stepping forward. It's like, hey, knit me. So I knit it through the front leg, and I don't have a twisted stitch. This one again, the front leg is forward, see that? It's saying knit me, so I knit it, and I don't have a twisted stitch. And I do that all the way down the row and I get normal knitting without any twist. Now I wanna show you these side by side so that way you can actually see the difference between the two swatches. Don't mind all the needles in play here, but you can see here on the mint colored one, every other row I have twisted stitches along the bottom of those V's. Whereas over here, they're all nice and straight, nothing is twisted on the bottom. Can you see the difference between the two? Now this difference of twisted stitches versus stitches that are just um, uniform, just like this, will change your gauge. So if you find that your swatch has twisted stitches, I'm sorry to say, you're gonna need to do another gauge swatch and you're gonna have to correct your twisted stitches so that way you get a 100% um, untwisted stockinette stitch swatch because it does make a difference in your gauge, okay? So that's the first thing I wanted to address here in this video is about twisted stitches, okay? So now that we have identified twisted stitches, know how to purl correctly, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at how to do the pattern. It feels like it's been a long week getting to this point, but I'm very proud of all of you for doing your gauge swatches. You'll notice I have my trusty highlighter out, and that's because it's time to highlight all of the numbers that pertain to the size we're making. If you remember in week one, I told you to go ahead and highlight the numbers that pertain to the size you're making, right? So let's go ahead, and I'm gonna do that again. Remember, I am a size 2X, so I'm gonna start off here by highlighting the size 2X. And I know that that is the one, two, three, fourth number inside the parenthesis. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna highlight every fourth number inside the parentheses as I come to them. So one, two, three, four, right there. And then as I continue on, one, two, three, four, let's see, one, two, three, four, right here. I almost counted the outside of the parentheses. 
Remember, you always get the link to the instructions over on my website. I've put the link in the video description box of this video. Go there, find week two, you'll see a link directing you to these instructions, okay? I'm now on the actual pattern portion, and this is where I begin to see a bunch of different numbers that are important to me and to all of you making other sizes. So I wanna make sure that I'm still highlighting my fourth number or whatever number you are um, working with, okay? So let's see, these are all of the same. One, two, three, and here's four right there. And all of this is the same. One, two, three, four. And if you want to highlight the centimeters, you can. Let's see here. Then it comes to the shoulder. One, two, three, four. It's pretty easy. And this is very helpful in making sure you're always in the right place in your pattern. One, two, three, four. and then so on. Okay, so that is the first step. Highlight all of the numbers that are important to you. The next step is to get down to the knitting. <laughs> Grab the yarn and the needles that you have decided you are going to use and follow along with the pattern. Here's the really good news. Your gauge swatch was like a super condensed down version of the front and the back of the sweater. It really is, I promise. <laughs> What you're gonna do is you will work in that ribbing, that three by two ribbing for a set number of inches. Then you'll switch to stockinette stitch, which is knitting one row, purling the next row. And you'll do that for a majority of the sweater. I mean, look at this one. You can see it's a majority of the sweater. When you reach the part indicated on the pattern near the top, that's when you will transition to that second type of ribbing stitch that we did at the end of our swatch. That's the part that's up here at the top of our shoulders, okay? So all the stitches that you need to know how to do, especially now that we just went over how to do twist or how to recognize twisted stitches, you already know how to do, okay? So there are a couple little tips here I wanna make sure I include in this video that were, that were requested from those of you in the group. The first question is this, Marley, when you're working in the ribbing, how do we tighten up this last knit stitch when we're working this three by two ribbing? It's the stitch that's always next to that purl bump. I wanna show you over here, I know this one's a little bit darker, but I'm gonna spread it out. You can see that my knit stitches along the edges of my purl bumps are a lot more snug than in this example. And the reason is this, when you purl in the traditional method of yarning over your right hand needle, just like we talked about, you actually have a little bit more yarn in every single stitch you purl as opposed to when you knit, okay? Let me show you what I mean here. When I transition from a knit stitch to a purl stitch, I want you to watch this. My yarn goes forward, I go into the stitch, I yarn over my right hand needle and back out. If I just continue on just like so, I have a little bit more yarn right here in this stitch than I did when I was creating those. So all I have to do is bring my yarn back to the back and give it a pull. Can you see right there how much more that tightens up? And then I can go ahead, let's say we were doing our rib stitch, so I'd purl the next one and give it a little bit of a tug. Then I could go to my knit, so I would do one, two, three, Go to my purl, come forward, purl, come out, bring my arm back to the back, and tighten up. Can you see how much that tightens up that stitch? I mean, come on, that right there tightens up this knit stitch right there because we're tightening up, tightening up the fabric as you transition from your knit to your purl. So that's one way you can tighten up that stitch. The other way is sort of ironic with the way I started this video, but it's 
If you were to purl purposely with the yarn under the right hand needle, and then when you come back on the following row, knit the stitch through the back leg, that tightens up that stitch as well. So it's a way that you can use combination knitting to tighten up that knit stitch, all right? So the first way is, again, is to purl the stitch, bring your yarn back to the back and give it a pull. The second way is to purposely go under the right hand needle and purl, but then when you come back, knit that stitch through the back leg so that way it's not twisted on your needle. Okay, so that's how you can tighten up those rib stitches if you wanna do that on your sweater pattern, okay? The other thing that I want to address here in the video is how do you recognize the right side or the wrong side, okay? So that's really easy and it's a quick, fix sort of uh, trick thing that you can do in order to recognize the right side and wrong side. This will be great for you beginner knitters. As you're working on the rib stitch, it can be a little bit confusing as to what's the right side or the wrong side. So for all of you beginner knitters out there that are struggling with this, I wanna point out, every time you're starting off with the three knits and ending with the three knits, you're on the right side of the fabric. So what I want you to do is take a stitch marker and place it literally through the stitches on the right side of your fabric. So that way you know that whenever you see that stitch marker, you are on the right side of your fabric or your knit side when you get to the stockinette portion. Another way to tell is this. When you're to the stockinette portion and you have your needle, your yarn on the needles in your left hand, you're getting ready to knit. If you are looking at these V's, you are looking at actual knit stitches, you are on a knit row, okay? So that lets you know you're on a knit row. If your yarn was in your hand, your needle was in your hand, and you're like this, and you're looking at purl bumps, you know you're on a purl row. So that is called reading your knitting. When you see a knit, knit them. When you see a purl, purl them, okay? So that will let you know you're on the right side or wrong side. But if you are in doubt, always use the trick of adding that stitch marker so that you know this is the right side, okay? Super easy to do. Another thing to point out about the pattern is that as you're working the sweater and you reach 15 inches, you will add stitch markers to either side of your fabric. And these are removable stitch markers. They're gonna clamp right onto the fabric and you're gonna leave them there. That is the bottom of your armhole. So it's important we know where those spots are on both the front and the back. Now that leads me to the next question. Marley, why do you keep mentioning the front and the back? That's because over the next two weeks, week two and week three, you will be making the back and the front of the sweater. Both of them are identical, okay? So you need to make sure that you have planned enough time to knit the back and the front of the sweater over the next two weeks. The best way to do that is this. Take the total length of your sweater. So 27.75 is my total length. And I am gonna make the front in seven days and I'm gonna make the back in seven days. So I'm gonna take my total length and divide that by seven. That gives me 3.96 some odd inches, okay? So I know that if I knit roughly four inches every day for seven days, I will complete the full front or the full back of my sweater. Does that make sense? So if you are worried about the amount of time it's going to take for you to knit your sweater, do this. Divide the total length of what your sweater is by the number of days you have to knit it, and that will let you know how many inches you need to knit per day in order to reach the desired um, outcome in, in that time frame. So this is doable. It is a lot of knitting, but I know that many of you can do it. Those of you who are size small and medium, you have it made. Think of us who are making the 2X, 3X, 4X. It's a lot more fabric we're creating than you are. So please 
pray for us. <laughs> <laughs> Wish us good luck and, uh, and and cheer us on from the group because it's a lot of knitting. It's four inches a day, but man, it's a, it's, a, it's a wide amount of fabric we have to create, but I know that we can do that, okay? So that is what we're going to do as far as your homework. You're gonna make the back of the sweater and the front of the sweater, and they are the identical instructions, okay? So even as you're looking at your sweater instructions, you'll see a full list of what you need to do for the back, and you'll do the exact same thing for the front. Now, the last thing that I wanna to talk to you about is how do you add yarn to your project? And this was specifically requested in the Facebook group, so I'm excited that I get to show you how to do this because the first thing I wanna tell you is this. Do not add yarn mid-row, okay? That's the first rule. I wanna make sure I'm throwing that out there. We're gonna add yarn always at the end. Now that might mean you need to cut a, a length of yarn off that maybe it just didn't meet all the way to the end, and it is what it is, people. Just trust me on this. Always add your yarn at the end of the row, okay? The very first stitch of the row, add your yarn there. That way we can hide that addition in the seam and if it were to ever come undone, it's gonna be locked in in the seam. You're not gonna get a hole in your sweater, whereas if you were to add yarn in the middle of your sweater, not only do you have a chance of getting a hole, you have to hide the yarn as you weave it in, it's just unsightly. So it's much better to get in the habit of adding the yarn at the edges of the sweater, okay? So that's the first thing. And let me show you how we're gonna do that. It's so easy, you're gonna be like, oh, well, I could have done that. So let me show you how that, th that is done. All right, so I'm pulling this swatch out again. It's being really useful today. And this is what I'm gonna do. Say this is my yarn that I'm, I'm finishing up, it's not attached anymore, and it's time for me to add a new ball of yarn. I'm gonna grab a new color so you can see how this works, okay? I'm gonna grab a new color, and I will go in and I will just start knitting with my new color. That is as easy as it gets, people. I am just knitting with the new color. Old color just hangs out here. If you wanna tie these two together, you can do that, so that way it doesn't flop around, but that's it. You will always add your yarn over here at the edge, and that's how you will add your new ball of yarn. It is really that simple. I think that's everything you need to know for this week's instructions. If there's something I missed, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below this video and I'll be sure to answer it as soon as I possibly can. But more importantly, just make sure that you finish the front and the back of this sweater over this week and next week. That means that next week's video, it isn't gonna be a bunch of new instructions. I'm actually gonna do a YouTube live session answering your questions live on air. So if there's anything that you would like to ask me regarding the sweater knit along, I would love it if you would join me here next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And then you can do a live question and answer with me for this sweater knit along, okay? So that's what we will do for week three. Um, I think that is it, you guys. I am so proud of all of you uh, doing your gauge swatches. I know it's a lot of work, but trust me, it's much better to get those gauge swatches done now than putting all that work into a sweater that doesn't fit. Keep up the good work, you guys. Keep encouraging each other there in the Facebook group. It's amazing to watch all the positivity over there. It just it just warms my heart and I love being a part of it. I really hope you are liking the yarn, liking the needles you chose because you're really going to be spending some time with them. Uh, for me, it's about four inches every day. So uh, those of you out there who are also making the 2X, I feel you, man. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of knitting, but we can do it. We can do this together. I'm Marley Bird. This is the My First Knit Sweater Knit Along. Hopefully you're having a good time, and uh, I will talk to you again next week live right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. I've got a surprise for you. In the video description box below, you'll see where it says coupon code. If you use that coupon code in the Marley Bird Ravelry store, you will get 50% off any pattern of your choice. That is my treat to you for watching the video all the way through. 
If you want to check out other videos here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel, I've got a couple right here <laughs> that you can choose from. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Thanks guys!